today uh, you are going to be privileged to hear 17 sermons. 17 sermons, um, all full length, of course. Um, no, 17 short sermons for the year 2017. That's why my wife says, why did you pick 17? And I thought, because it's a prime number. <laughs> Because it's 2017. So I will go be going through those pretty quickly. And um, I have some uh, copies printed up of the 17 statements if you would like to have one. But you have to wait till the end of the service. So let's begin with five quick sermons. Are you ready? These are going to go by fast, so pay attention. Um, what I did was I sent out uh, on Facebook a message to... Uh, friends and clergy members that I know, asking them to send me their ideas for 17 ideas to keep in mind during the year 2017. And I picked out some of them, and here they are. So some of these are mine, some of these are from the Bible, some of these are from other places. Let's go. Number one, Galatians 5.22. If it's a Bible verse, I'm going to ask you to read it with me. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So I'm starting today with 17 sermons, and the first one is nine sermons. All of these things are things that God is attempting to grow in your life. And in the course of this coming year, what you want to do is open up and let God grow these things in the course of your life. You are the gardener of your own life. So if God creates the seeds and sends the sun and rain, it is your job to tend the soil. And it is your job to prepare the soil of your soul so that these things can grow in it. And let me ask you, next year, we'll be here on the day after New Year's Day, or the day before, one of them, day after. Yeah, New Year's Eve, we'll be here, okay, the day before. So you're going to come to the end of the year, and we'll be here again. And wouldn't you like to be able to say, over the course of this year, 2017, that at least three of these things grew in your life? Number two, Matthew 10, 16. These are the words of Jesus. Let's read them together. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. You know, the world around you is tricky, and you're going to have some tricky times in this coming year. On the one hand, you need to be aware that there are people out there who will mean you harm and will harm you if they get the opportunity to do so and you need to deal with those people shrewdly and carefully and be wise and aware of all the troubles that there are out there but at the same time there are people in the world out there who are good and kind and who seek to be good and kind to you and you want to deal with them with the innocence of a child and allow them to do the good to you that they would like to do and somehow you've got to keep that in balance so when you go out into the world, you need to be shrewd and you need to be innocent. You need to be clever like the snake. And I'm not sure what it was about biblical times that they thought the snake was a particularly clever animal. I suppose if we wrote this today, we would say as wise as dolphins and as innocent as doves. But I want you to be shrewd and innocent. In this coming year, find that balancing point. Number three, my daughter sent me this quote from Marianne Rodmacher. Let's read it. Together. We might as well read them all together. Courage does not always roar. Sometimes courage is the quiet voice at the end of the day that says, I will try again tomorrow. I think that's a good statement. Those wolves that we just talked about in the previous passage, those wolves are going to come after you sometimes, and you are going to fail in what it is you attempt to do sometimes. You're going to break off some of the blossoming fruits of the Spirit that are growing in you in the coming year. You are going to go to bed feeling like you have failed and you have come to where you do not want to be. And when you do, you lay down in the bed and instead of saying, I am a miserable failure, you say, be courageous. Be courageous, people. And courage oftentimes is just getting up and trying one more time. My brother... Uh, this may come as a shock to you, but both of my brothers are smart, Alex. How many roads must a man walk down before you will call him a cab? <laughs> now, raise your hand if you get the reference, all right? 
All right, it's a Bob Dylan song, which goes, how many roads must a man walk down before you call him a man? So um, my brother was just thinking this would be too silly to put into the sermon, but he was wrong about that. Um, because this original song was, was asking this question, how much do we let a person struggle before we allow them to have some dignity? That song has great meaning for us because it was written during the time of the civil uh, rights conflicts and, and it made sense to wonder that question. This song also has some meaning for us because it could also be a song about compassion. Is there co room for compassion in our society? Are we just going to keep driving by and let those people continue to walk down the slushy side of the road or might we stop and offer a ride or call a cab for somebody if we could? Here's an idea for 2017. Let's try to treat each other with dignity and compassion as is needed. Number five, this is the last of the first section. I'm not born again, I'm still in labor. Now that phrase, born again, was said by Jesus, although it's not a particularly good translation of what Jesus actually said. But it has been latched onto by a particular religious expression in our, church, in our country, in Protestantism, and it's almost become like a membership card. You can ask, have any, how many of you have ever been asked, well, are you born again? Anybody come to your door and ask you that question, or came up to you on the street and asked you, yeah. I've had somebody online recently trying to figure that out about me. The problem is that it, it, sound like, it sounds like, and it's used like, something that just suddenly happens and just one time. You get born again, and it's done. But following Jesus is a process, it's something we grow into. It doesn't just suddenly happen, and it doesn't just suddenly complete. I don't know of anyone who has fully attained the path of Jesus in their lives. I am in the process myself of being born again. I'm still in labor. So if somebody in 2017 asks you the question, are you born again? What can you say? I'm still in labor. Five more thoughts. Are you ready? Here comes number six. When you pray for someone, you must believe that God can work through you. Otherwise, it's just going to hit the ceiling and come back. How many of you know Daryl Giles, Jr.? Not just me. I went to high school with the guy. I haven't seen him since, but I see him on Facebook, and he sent this along. I thought, that's pretty wise right there. Um, I love this point. Our prayers in 2017, what we pray for cannot be, God, fix this. Our prayers instead should be, God, help me fix this. That's what we should be praying, asking God to help us fix things, because that is the way God works. You know the story of God uh, saying to Moses in front of the burning bush, God says to Moses, I have heard the suffering of my people. I've heard them cry out, and I have decided to save them. So you go down and tell Pharaoh to let them go. It's not God saying, so I'm just going to make Pharaoh let them go. It's God sending someone along to do it. And that is really what we have to pray about. If we're going to pray for someone or some situation, we need to be prepared put ourselves into that equation or the prayer hits the ceiling and bounces back. Number seven, say it with me. Sometimes we don't recognize the noise around us until it stops and all we hear is silence. So you've got the TV on in your house and somebody's been watching it but right now kind of everybody's walked away and everybody's doing something else and the TV is still blaring away and everybody's starting to feel a little edgy and annoyed with each other and they're starting to snap at each other until finally somebody goes over and hits the button and turns the TV. And the silence is deafening. Have you noticed that? Sometimes we have all this annoying sound going on and we don't hear the silence. And January, in some ways, is the most silent month we've got because everything is covered with the snow and the sounds are muffled, and we need to experience the silence sometimes. How many of you are not getting enough silence in your life besides me? Who else is not? Yeah. We need to find a way to do that. We need to be able to turn that off, turn the noise off, because sometimes really all it is is just noise. My last line was, be sure to make sure that you get your minimum daily adult requirement of silence. And kid requirement, too. This one, read this one with me. This is a good one. 
Guilt is the gift that keeps on giving. It's a package you can open every day of the year. Guilt uh, is ours once we pick it up. And it may well be deserved, but you can't live in it. You just can't. You have to let it go at some point. You have to let yourself be forgiven at some point. If you are holding on to guilt and you won't let it go, then what you are saying is that Christ died for no reason because the guilt is nailed to the cross and should be left there. Let yourself be forgiven this year. You may still carry the sorrow or the regret for what you have done, but the crushing load of guilt that tells you you do not deserve to be loved or, repent, uh, or respected, that has got to go. Let it go. Get rid of it. That gift needs to get put out by the curb with your dead Christmas tree in a few more days. Okay? This is uh, a literary quote coming up. Number nine. Read with me. Some believe it is only great power that can hold evil in check. But that is not what I have found. It is the small, everyday deeds of ordinary folk that keep the darkness at bay. Do you know who this was said to? What character from literature this was said to? Who? Yes, which, you know? This is to Frodo. This was said by Gandalf to Frodo. How many of you have no idea what I'm talking about? Raise your hand if you don't know. Okay, it's about half. From the book, The Lord of the Rings, one of the great acts of works of literature of our time. Um, Frodo is a hobbit, and a hobbit is just a small creature called halflings, about the size of a child, and uh, they have no magical powers whatsoever other than they somehow seem to be determined to keep trying to do what they need to do. This is a good quote because what Tolkien came to find out was what the Bible also says, is that the ordinary everyday acts of courageous people are the things that make the difference in the world. We often like to say it is our armed services that have made us free, and there's something to that, but we need to remember that there is much else that goes on. The reason we are free today is because of the teachers in the classrooms and the EMTs on the ambulance and the physicians and nurses in the hospitals. We are free today because of the bureaucrats in offices making decisions that protect the rest of us. We are free today because small people do ordinary things that turn out to have our extraordinary results. And if you are one of those small people, then don't stop. We need what you're doing. You are the bulwark against evil in this world. Number 10. Jesus said this one. No one can live only on food. How do you know it? What's the way you've heard that phrase said? Yeah, man cannot live by bread alone. This is from a modern translation. No one can live only on food. Jesus said that when he was where? Doing what? Yes, Monty's right. He was out spending 40 days out in the desert, and he had no food. He went out there because he wanted to focus solely on his uh, spiritual life. So he went out into the desert. He didn't eat. Maybe um, that is something we need to think more about. When he prayed uh, out there in the barren land, he recognized that we have appetites, and the appetites are good. They keep us safe. They make us look for things that we need. But we don't always have our appetites in the right order. And we need to remember that in our daily struggle, it's the spiritual matters that we face in battle that are as important as anything. You need to feed your soul in 2017. You need to feed your soul in 2017. Here comes the last seven. Are you ready? Oh, we're doing good time-wise, too. Number 11. This is the uh, most controversial one, perhaps. But it's, it's, well, here it is. Read it with me, if you will. If you want to understand any problem in America, you need to focus on who profits from that problem, not who suffers from the problem. I think this is a good one because it's worth keeping in mind. More of a political statement, perhaps, than a spiritual statement, but as in most things like that, there's overlap. If it's true that it's the small, ordinary people and things that God uses to move forward in this world, then we need to be careful about blaming the small and the ordinary for the troubles in the world. Let us begin with an inclination 
towards working with the poorest, the smallest, and the weakest. It is unlikely, it seems to me, that the problem in the world is caused by the refugees. It may be caused by those who are making refugees. So let's make sure when we focus on where the problems are, we do not blame the poorest and the weakest among us for the troubles. And you can go from that right to this one. Say it with me. Whoever is without sin, cast the first stone. What's the situation where Jesus says this? Who knows what has happened? Yes. Yeah. Yes, so they've got a woman that may be a prostitute, maybe committed adultery. They bring her to Jesus because the people in town, the, the people want to stone her. What people want to stone her? Who's in the circle? Yeah, you know who it is. It's the powerful people in town. So the powerful people catch the weakest person and bring her, and they want to kill her, and they want Jesus to approve of that. And Jesus doesn't approve of that at all. And Jesus says instead, if you want to throw stones at her until she's dead, well, then start with those of you who have never committed a sin. How many first stone throwers do we have here among us today? Anyone? Anyone? No? Jesus was pointing out that the particular problem was not her sinfulness that was the at, at issue, but it was the judgmental, unfeeling sinfulness of the men of position and power that was the problem. Here's a good idea for the new year. Let's remember this. We have all fallen short of God's ideal for us. Every one of us. Here's one my other brother sent me, who was also a smart aleck, but this time he wasn't. A strange game. The only winning move is not to play. Anybody remember that one? Yeah, okay. It's from a movie from 30 years ago, a movie called War Games. And the story of the movie is about a computer that had been designed to uh, practice out what would happen in the scenario of nuclear war and figure out as it played these war games what would actually happen. And uh, the computer accidentally, of course, initiates an actual war instead of just practice. And to shut it down, they have to teach the computer that uh, nuclear war is like tic-tac-toe. Play tic-tac-toe? Do you ever play with somebody and nobody ever wins? The game goes on and on and on because nobody can ever win, all right? And that's how they teach the computer. And finally, the computer says, an interesting game. The only way to win is not to play. And that is true for nuclear war. And it is also true for your relationships with your family members. You are playing games sometimes with them. There's all kinds of games that families play. And when you play games and you have a winner, what do you also have? Yeah. The only way to win is not to play. Micah 6, 8. Could hardly do this list without this verse. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. How many of you feel like over the course of 2017 you could remember just three things? If I asked you today, just remember three things, do you think you could manage it? Karen, is that too many? I, you're, I know you're... <laughs> Well, Karen, Karen is currently carrying an awful lot of things in her mind right now. You might, some of those might have to, you might have to delete some items. Yes, and, and put this in, yeah, find somewhere. Three things, just remember three things, folks. All you have to do is remember three things as you go about your life. Number one, act justly. Just try to work for justice for all people. Work for justice with people. Number two, love mercy. Do you love mercy? Do you love when people have mercy? Then have mercy. And number three, walk humbly with your God. Yes, walk proudly with your God. No. Walk how? Humbly. Because who are you? Wait a minute. Who are you? Yeah. So walk humbly with your God. And remember, these are other people out there too. Oh. This next one is also one. If you could just remember one, this would be a good one, but it's a tough one. This is Jesus. If you want to save your life, you will destroy it. But if you give up your life for me, you will save it. 
We clutch at things. We grasp at things. But we are created to release. As long as your life is about yourself, you are in the process of destroying it. When life is about serving Christ and serving people that Christ loved, then we begin to find the things that we really need. Here's a good idea for the coming year. You ready? Simply this. Live not for yourself, but for Christ. Do that in the coming year. 16. I love this one. Every saint has a past. Every sinner has a future. Because among us in this world are many saints. There are saints all around us. In fact, I happen to know that there are some saints right here in this room. Are there not? Look around. Don't you see a few here and there? There are saints here. And all I can tell you about any one of these given saints, uh, who should I pick? I won't pick. But I could pick one of you saints and I could have you stand up and say, here is a saint who was once a sinner. Because all saints were once sinners. And among us in this room besides saints, guess what else there is? Sinners. There are plenty of sinners here in this room. Plenty of sinners all around us. And I could pick out any one of you. Well, I won't do it. <laughs> I could pick out any one of you sinners and have you stand up and say, here is someone who will one day be a saint. Because every saint has a past from which they have moved, and every sinner has a future possibility to which they can go. I love that. Um, that's from our conference minister. She said it in a sermon that I heard. I don't know if she was quoting, um, but she said it, and I wrote it down and put it on my bulletin board. Number 17. Matthew 6:33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. I somehow missed changing that word because I want you to be clear. We're talking about God's realm and God's righteousness. Seek first God's realm and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Now, this comes right near the middle, well, kind of about the two-thirds point of Jesus' famous Sermon on the Mount, in which Jesus is trying to tell all the things that he uh, wants you to know and, and the things that you are worried about. Is anybody sitting here today got to worry about something. Is it on your mind? Something that you're worrying about? Anyone besides me? Anyone worrying? Okay. I think most of us are. And that's okay. It's not a sin to worry. It's just something people do. But Jesus is saying, you got to remember that sometimes you're worried about things that you don't really need. What you need to be worried about is this. Are you living now in heaven? Are you in God's realm right now? Heaven is not a distant place or a distant time. It's here and now. And Jesus' message, his entire message was, you can live in it right now. Seek the kingdom of God. Seek the realm of heaven. Seek God's world. Seek God's way. That's the most important thing you can do in 2017. I like what Joanne's going to do about getting up every day and thinking about what she can do for it's nice for somebody else, and that's part of this process. Because what if you woke up every day and you looked out the window or around your room and you said, where is the realm of God today? Where is it? Where is it? Find it. Figure out where it is. Whatever that means to you, Find the realm of God and live in it. If you want the rest of your life to shape out over 2017, that's where you start. And you never finish with it either. That's the thing that we put most important in our lives. Find the realm of God. Live in it. That's what's most important. In other words, as the King James Version put it, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Hallelujah, alleluia. Again, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Hallelujah, alleluia. 17 sermons in one day. It's a new record at High Street Church. Next year we'll break it.
You've been listening to a sermon by Rev. Stephen Carnahan, pastor of High Street Congregational Church in Auburn, Maine. If you feel inspired by what you hear, we invite you to join us in person for worship services every Sunday morning, beginning at 10 o'clock. Of course, you can always listen to Steve's sermons on the web. New sermons are posted every Monday by midday. Please take a moment to explore this website for more information about our church or visit our Facebook page at High Street Congregational Church, comma, UCC. We hope that God's presence will be known to you every hour of every day and that God's blessings will rest upon you now and always. See you next week.